Then we get into neurologic tissue. What we have there is anything from the brain, brain spinal cord, nerve roots, nerve trunks, cords, plexi, peripheral nerves. Basically what these are is the trunks and cords is as you go away from the spine, first you have the trunks, then they become cords, and you have the plexi like the brachial plexus, and then they become peripheral nerves where they're actual named nerves like median nerve, ulnar nerve, things like that. And then the way that we're going to test a nerve tissue is you're going to traction or stretch the nerve. And we'll do a lot of tests where, like there's a straight leg raising test, where the nerves that are going down the leg, you're stretching the nerve. Basically, you're tracking the nerve. And most of the time, especially with spinal nerves, you're stretching them in flexion. When you do this, you're stretching the, the nerves and then flexion of the hip or the low back, you're stretching things like that. And when you bend backwards, usually you're going to be compressing the joints. And we'll talk more about the set joints, but you can see that the joints on the back of the spine, when you extend, that's where you're going to be compressing the joints. When you're bending forward, you're usually stretching it and stretching the nerves. The other thing is compressing or pinching a nerve. So a nerve is basically going through in an opening. If you do something to stretch on it, to stretch it through the opening, <coughs> or you're going to compress it or pinch it where you're going to try to narrow the opening that it goes through. Like we'll talk about cervical compression tests where we're pressing down and compressing those nerve roots. Or we'll do things in the low back where we're compressing the nerve roots. And then you can percuss or tap on a nerve. Okay, everybody's had this kind of thing where you, the, you know, funny bone, right? That's your ulnar nerve. So we're going to be tapping on it. So there's a lot of tests that we'll do like that. And, and most of the time it's called Tunnell's test. So this would be Tunnell's test at the elbow. So again, so nerves, you either traction or stretch them. You narrow the opening that they go through, or you actually physically tap or percuss on them. And then how do nerves get injured, mechanism of injury? Either repetitive trauma or progressive conditions. Anything that's going to narrow that opening where that nerve goes through, or if you suddenly stretch or tear a nerve, like you can have different avulsion types of things. If the shoulder and the head get aggressively separated, you can tear or stretch the nerves going through here in the brachial plexus. And the symptoms, a nerve type of pain is where you're going to have things like numbness and tingling and burning and different situations like that. If it's contractile tissue or nerve tissue, it's basically going to be pain, either sharp or dull or cramping. But once you start getting the electrical types of symptoms, that's when you're talking about nerve tissue. Right? <coughs> then, if you remember in, in OD1, you talked about reflexes and sensory things like that. So you can also have manifestations of nerve injuries when you're testing reflexes and sensory. Because nerves, you either have two kinds, right? Motor and sensory. So you can have weakness. Now, weakness can be someone's gonna, not going to want to move their arm because they broke their humerus, right? So sometimes it can be from trauma, or is this the weakness due to pain, or is the weakness due to improper nerve supply? So you want to differentiate between that. And then we have vascular tissue. Basically, it's going to be arteries and veins. Right. Now, can you think of any type of symptom that would only occur with a vascular problem? What's that? Headache? Uh, there, well, there are certain types of headaches that are vascular related. But, I mean, you can have a, head, a headache from Know, ten, nerve muscle tension, nerve irritation. Okay. What, why is my the tip of my finger, why is that pain? It's blood. Okay. So what's going to happen if you have decreased blood supply? Color changes, so it'll be pale. Okay. Are you going to have that with nerve tissue, contractile tissue? Not really. Okay. And then also you can get blue. Okay. So, and then also you have swelling and edema, revascular, but you can get those with, with other trauma. But if, if something feels cold to the touch, you pretty much know that's going to be vascular. Or if it's white or blue, things start turning colors. I mean, red obviously can be from acute trauma. But when you're talking about white and blue colors, you're talking usually about vascular. 
And then if we're talking about here are the vessels to the to the head, then you can start talking about symptoms like dizziness, nausea, vomiting, things like that. Basically, with musculoskeletal exam, what you're doing is you're examining moving parts. Everybody know what that is there? I might be taking myself, but it's a game called mousetrap, right? It's where you have to put all the pieces together. So that's basically what you're doing is you're putting all the pieces together, and then you want to make sure at the end when you turn that crank that the cage comes down and catches the mouse. So joints normally move within certain known limits. And we'll be talking about range of motion, so we'll know that, okay, a joint is supposed to move in these different planes. If it doesn't, there's something wrong. So, and then the joint movement can be limited by different ways. It can be because there's muscle weakness where they can't raise it up, or there's a problem in the joint where the joint's locked. So it can be either inner tissue lesions, contractile tissue, neurologic things. So... Basically, it's like, it's, it's kind of like, orthopedics is sort of like carpentry. You know, like if you've ever seen any kind of orthopedic surgery, they're using hammers and <coughs> drills and saws and things like that. I mean, sure, they're nice and fancy and they're stainless steel and all that, but it's still, you know, a hammer's a hammer, right? And then you're getting in and working with different cartilages. Like when we talk about the knee, you have the meniscus. So if the meniscus tears, it's basically a physical piece of something that's blocking the movement. You know, it's like you have, on the door you have the hinges, right? If the hinges get rusty, they're not going to move real well. You're going to have decreased range of motion, things like that. So a lot of the special tests and things that we're going to do is manipulating tissue in such a way to try to evaluate what's the part that's uh, been damaged. Right? So typically when you start with an examination, you're going to focus on the presenting complaints. Okay, so someone says, hey, my arm hurts, my shoulder hurts, I can't raise my leg, I can't bend this way. So they're going to come in and they're having some type of symptom. And then your assessment and evaluation is going to be based on that. Right? Normal healthy tissue functions without pain. So if something's not functioning normal, you get a problem. So what you're going to do is like you're going to be a detective. You're going to try to figure out, okay, what's, what's the problem? So you're going to go through each of the different tissues and find out what's working normally, what's abnormal. And then whatever tissue that has the problem, that's your diagnosis. Okay? If somebody has a tendon problem in their shoulder, then you have shoulder tendon tendonitis. Okay? So we have a cervical sprain strain. They got, I mean, if they stretch and tear the ligaments, then you have cervical sprain strain. And then we have different things we have. Diagnosis, there's another abbreviation, DX for diagnosis, and then DDX, the so differential diagnosis. Differential diagnosis, I think it says in there, is basically you say, well, I think it could be this, this, or this. So differential diagnosis will be a list of three, two or three or four different items and you're trying to figure out which one it is. And then, you know, you may say, well, okay, we need to order an x-ray, we need to do an MRI or something to get the definitive diagnosis. Uh, so sometimes with these certain, with, and another thing is there'll be certain special tests that you do to, to uh, discern a certain differential diagnosis, where one of them, if, if the results are this way on the test, it's one diagnosis, it's another way, then it's another diagnosis. 